Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Daniel and I am a 2D illustrator and in this one I'm going to be breaking down some of my post-processing effects that I like to use in Photoshop once I've finished painting everything. So just ignore this folder here. Uh, for demonstration purposes I'm going to create a new one and break things down step by step. So an important thing to keep in mind is working non-destructively. That basically meaning that any change I add onto my layers, it's not going to permanently affect everything. And this is important because if I ever want to go back and change something or just experiment, I'm not actually destroying my work that I've already done beforehand. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go down here and select this half circle. By the way, my Photoshop layout might look a little bit different to yours, but it should be at the bottom of the layers panel. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And the first thing I want to do is add a bit of contrast and balance out some of my values in the image. There's a couple ways we can do this. The first one is just using the levels tab and we can see the distribution of levels throughout our image. This being the midtones, uh, blacks, and then the whites over here. If I go ahead and pull in the blacks to the right hand side, it's just going to bump that up. And the same thing if I move down the whites here, it's essentially just narrowing the amount of contrast that we have within the image, meaning that it's going to have more contrast, if that makes any sense. We can also affect global changes here. So if I want the overall image to be darker, I can go ahead and move this down. Or if I want the image to be lighter and more washed out, I can pull it in this way. I personally don't use this. Instead, I use curves, which is just located right here. The reason why I use curves is because it's a lot more versatile than levels because we can do the same things that we could just by using these two sliders as well as dragging this one down here. But the thing with curves is that we can put points along this line and essentially just move down individual traits of our image and just give us a little bit more control. So for example, if I want to go ahead and darken just the, the black parts of my image or the, uh, the shadowed regions, can go ahead and put a little dot here and then just drag this down a little bit. And you can see when I turn this on and off, it's not really affecting the white areas too much. It is slightly just because of the way that this uh, curve is working, but everything else gets a little bit extra. And I like to use this a lot because like I said, it gives you a lot more control. So the next thing I like to do is just adding a bit of color correction into the image. And I'm trying to frame this tutorial not so much by do everything that I'm doing, but giving you guys insight into why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. And you can apply this to your own needs as well. So in color correction, we have a few different options. The first one that is pretty good is color balance. And over here, we can see the tone or the different parts of the image it's going to affect, such as the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And it's pretty self-explanatory. If I drag the slider over here, it's going to make the overall image a bit more cyan. If I wanted it to be very lo-fi, I can go ahead and pull it to magenta and just introducing a tiny bit of yellow here so it's not too cold. Because if I drag this here, you can see it starts to look a bit crazy. Pull that just on and off, you can have a look. And obviously most of these changes I'll be doing would be very subtle. Uh, but I'm just going to drag these down to see, to show you guys what it looks like. The second option for color correction is selective color. Now this option is a little bit more subtle, but if you come up to colors here, it's going to affect specific colors within our image. Whereas color balance kind of pushes a bunch of colors towards something. This is only going to affect the selected color. So for the reds, if I go ahead and drag this down, this is actually removing cyan from the reds, meaning that it's going to get more red, as you can see. And if I bring it down to the opposite side, it's going to be introducing a little bit more cyan, but because this image is very warm to begin with, it's going to appear desaturated. Uh, and you guys can go ahead and just experiment to see what kind of effects you can get. So we can also come up to the blues add a bit more cyan. If I'm adding more cyan to blue, it's going to increase that level of saturation. Uh, and conversely, the same thing for the other colors as well. Apart from that, there's also a couple of cooler ways to do some color correction. The first one is color lookup. So when you load Photoshop, 
and you select color lookup, you're going to have a lot of different filters here. And think of these like Instagram filters. So the presets that Photoshop has made, if I go ahead and select and just run through these, you can see different effects that it's having. And if I just go back here, pretty dramatically, if I choose something like Moonlight, um, it changes the whole mood of the illustration. And something that's really cool is because we are working non-destructively, I can select this layer mask, go ahead and find a airbrush. And if I start painting in where the lights are, you can start, you can see that I'm erasing this layer out. So everything beneath it, which is this one, is gonna come through. Uh, this is really, really cool because you can see I'm creating really quick lighting. Uh, and if I wanted some of this image to show through, I can start doing that. Obviously you would need a lot more work to bring this to a reasonable state, but it is an option if you wanted to do something major like this. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna be showing you guys is the high pass filter. And I'm actually not too sure a lot of people know about this, but it is a cool way to increase a bit of contrast in areas of the image and bump up edge fidelity. So I'm just going to create a new layer and press Control, Alt, Shift, and E all at once. That is going to merge the entire image into one layer here so I can go ahead and edit it and not have to worry about destroying everything that I've done beforehand, working non-destructively. I'm gonna go up into Filter, Other, High Pass, and here is where we get to finesse it a little bit. So if I increase this a lot, essentially what Photoshop is doing is that it's looking at this image and finding points of contrast between edges. So for example, it's gonna be looking at the bridge up here. You see there's a halo effect. It's gonna be looking at the cyclist's helmet compared to the bus, uh, even some of the railings here and the shadows. And anything that will be affected with the high pass filter is going to sharpen those areas up. This is a little bit too much, but I will keep it a little bit on the higher side just for demonstration purposes. Hit okay. And then what I'm gonna do is go up into the blending mode and choose overlay. Now you can see it's really crunched everything and it looks super intense. Well, what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a layer mask. I can press Alt, click on the layer mask and it's going to invert it already. Now all I have to do is go in here and start painting where I want the contrast to be. And typically for me in my illustrations, I do this around the focal points just to reinforce it a little bit. And again, this is uh, a bit more extreme for demonstration purposes, but if I turn this on and off, you can see what that does. It just bumps everything up a little bit. So the next thing that we can do is by adding some chromatic aberration. This is getting more into stylistic choices. Uh, chromatic aberration is really obvious and prevalent in a lot of like cyberpunk things or 80s films or what have you, but it's really just a camera's imperfection because it, the way it works is the light passes through a camera and sometimes it's not able to focus all of the different channels together and that's why we get different bleeding around the, the sides. So to actually do this in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and create a merge layer again by creating a new layer and then Control, Alt, Shift and E. If I double click on this thumbnail, it's going to bring up this layer style option. And if we go into advanced blending, I've got R, G and B for the different channels. All I have to do is untick two of them. Doesn't matter which ones, as long as it's just two. So go ahead and untick R and B. We are left with the green channel. Go ahead and press okay. Now all I have to do is press control T to select the entire layer and use my arrow keys to move it across. and. You can see if I move it across a lot, you, you're seeing what the effect is having on the image, which is just having that color bleed. Um, again, subtlety is key. So I'm gonna go ahead and press my left arrow twice. This might actually even be a bit too much. So just once and we've done that. Now to actually control where we have chromatic aberration, that's where layer styles come in handy. Now for me, I usually think of chromatic aberration like um, using blur. So some of the things I don't really want you to look at, just around the corner, or even a bit here at the edges, I will go ahead and paint that in. Um, I don't want it necessarily around my character or anything important like this text over here. But you can see it just helps to direct the eye a little bit more throughout this image. 
Okay, so if you've been noodling around with all of these different post-processing effects and you still feel like something is missing, I've got one more option for you. And that is just to go ahead and again, control alt shift D, merge everything into one layer, except this time, right click that and choose convert to smart object. Uh, again, any, this is non-destructive. Whatever we do, we can, we can rebuild. We have the technology. So come up over into filter and choose camera raw filter. This is only available for Photoshop, but what it can do is just give us a bunch of different controls uh, over here that we can add to our image. So apart from some of the stuff that we've already done, such as um, color grading, there's a lot of different options here. I won't go ahead and explain all of them. Uh, you guys can have a look on other tutorials and figure these out. That's pretty fun to play with. Um, there are also different color grading and color mixes on top of what we've already done. And it's really just about experimenting and trying out different things to see how they all work together. And apart from camera raw filter, I actually do have one last thing to show you, which is noise. And noise is pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and choose a neutral gray right in the middle and press alt backspace to fill the entire layer with this type of gray. I'm going to go into filter and then noise and add noise. And we have a few different options here. The amount controls how grainy it ends up being. Uh, and we can also select monochromatic. So if I, if you just have a look in this preview window, if I unselect that, this noise has a bit of color. This one doesn't, uh, it's really up to you. It doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna leave it with color, select okay, and then go into this blending mode and choose soft light. Uh, to really see the effect, you have to zoom in a little bit to the image and uh, this is a bit too strong. So again, I'm just going to use the opacity and find something that looks like it's adding a little bit to the image, but it's not breaking anything specifically. So that looks okay. Uh, in my opinion, again, very subtle, but it just helps to tie everything together. And just to recap, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and added some contrast using the curves bump up some of the levels of the image. We've also used a bit of selective color. We've got a high pass filter, which is meant to reinforce our focal points. We've also got our lovely chromatic aberration just to add a bit of focus into our image. And uh, if we used smart uh, camera raw filter, this would sit on top because it adds everything. Uh, it crunches everything together into one layer. The most important takeaway I want you guys to understand from this is that noise should sit on the top of everything else because if I already create noise before and I'm creating layers above layers, it's just going to double up the effect and we won't be able to control that uh, at all. So just make sure that your noise layer is sitting right at the top above everything else. And if you just go ahead and turn off the layer on and on, you can see all of the effects happening at once. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you out. Let me know in the comments if there was anything I could explain in more detail or do a follow up on and break it down even further. And if you'd like to follow more of my work, you can find me on Instagram at Daniel Art and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks so much. See ya.